Hello, welcome to this webinar on how to settle your donkeys into uh, your home, their new home. And I'm really excited to share this information with you because it's such a key part of the success of taking on new donkeys and making them comfortable and happy in their new homes and to ensure that there's everybody's safety is paramount so that the donkeys settle in safely and that everybody starts off on the right foot so that we can have a long happy relationship together. Uh, the one thing I'm not going to talk about in huge detail in this webinar is introducing your donkeys to other donkeys um, or to other animals. Um, I will touch on it but we've created another recording which you'll be able to find on how to introduce your donkeys to new donkeys or other animals and why perhaps you shouldn't introduce them to other animals. So look out for that recording, it will follow this one. Lots of detail on how you can safely um, introduce your equines um, to their new companions. For today, uh, what we're going to cover is why settling is so important to well-being. Uh, I want to just touch on why this is such a, a focus and getting this right is so important because it really does set you up for the rest of your relationship with your equines. And it is a, the difference between being able to perhaps keep your equines or not keeping them. Um, why it can go wrong. Um, what should we going to break the whole thing into three different elements there? What should we do before they arrive? What should we do when they arrive? And the four stages of progress to ensure that smooth transition. So to, to think about what actually is the challenge that donkeys face in their new home? I wanted you to think about perhaps moving home yourself. Let's say that you've moved home, you've sold your house, today's moving day. That's pretty stressful on its own, just moving. And our donkeys are going to face the same challenge. They're going to move from where they've been for perhaps years into a brand new environment. But on top of that, I want to suppose to you that you're going to start a new job on the same day that you're moving house. You're going to turn up to a new job. You're the new person in this environment. You're going to have to work out all of the different people, the people you're going to meet, your colleagues, people in the office, or whatever your job is. You're going to be meeting these new people. And again, you can see the similarities from the donkey. We've moved their home. We've given them a new job. They may well have had a completely different relationship um, with their previous carers than they're going to have with you. Uh, for them, figuring out these new two legs, the humans in their environment, is really important uh, to be able to understand their environment. You know, if we put you in a new job and you're going to have to work out where everything is, where do I find the stationary cupboard? Where do I find the, the toilets? Where do I do all of this sort of thing? And then not only that, another important question might well be, what am I doing about food? Is it okay to eat at lunch at my desk? Or am I expected to go out? How do I, how do, I do all of these things? These are all stressors that your donkey's experiencing when they come to you. You know, and these are all magnified. If you bring your donkey from a nice, quiet environment to one that has a, a lot more noise or is close to a road or is in the flight path of an airport or uh, just generally has much more busyness than where they've been, it's even more stressful. But I want to add another layer. Let's say you've sold your house, you start your new job, you're meeting your colleagues and you find out where you can eat your lunch. But then the boss says, look, I've got, I've got an issue. I need you to do all of those things today. And I appreciate it's your first day, but I'd also like you to make your way across London to a particular venue that we've got to do a presentation at. And I need you to do that presentation. I need you to start work right now, get there, find your way and present to 50 people with a colleague that you've never met before. I think most people would consider that this whole scenario would be massively overwhelming. And yet, I think you'll begin to see that's what I'm proposing a donkey is experiencing when they move to a new home, the new environment, the new people, where to find things. If we then start to add in very quickly doing too much, 
being asked to perform a level that they did previously. You might be a brilliant presenter, but in this new environment with people you don't know to a new clientele with new material, that's going to put you under stress. When you're under stress, things can go wrong. And this is why I need you to think about this as we go through this presentation and what we're doing with our donkeys. Because I, over my 20 years experience at the Donkey Sanctuary, have seen kind of two approaches that people take. Uh, number uh, one approach is like this. They, they love their donkeys. They're excited to have their donkeys. They might do some enrichment. They want to cuddle the donkeys. They want to love the donkeys. Um, they're going to introduce the donkeys to the environment that they've carefully created for them. These are all really positive things. They're going to then start to do, well, I, I, I want to do some training. Now, we always say don't do too much too soon. Yet for some people, literally going for a walk to the local village a mile away in the first week isn't too much too soon because in their minds, their donkeys are great. So starting to do work. This is you having to do that presentation with a colleague you've never met before. Um, you know, wanting to get out there because donkeys are going to enjoy going for a walk, you know, maybe introducing some things that are going to be really challenging for them. None of these things are, are wrong things. They're just necessarily in the wrong place if they're done too early in the donkey settling in period. Now, it might not be you're going to do all this walking and all, but maybe it's the, the banner that says, welcome to your new home. Maybe it's the tinsel on the head collar that you're thinking of putting on because it's Christmas. Maybe it's the the children and the dog and the relatives and everybody's come to see the donkeys arrive. What tends to happen in this home, we do too much too soon. The first week, the first two weeks, we're trying to push the donkey. We're trying to help the donkey. We're trying to do more with the donkey. That donkey's nervous. It doesn't know their owner. And maybe they make a small error. Maybe you get to pick their feet up and, and they just wobble it. Maybe they kick out a little bit because they're nervous. And you think, oh, and what begins to happen is we set a chain of events in quite often. This is the type of home that's done too much too quickly. will end up having to relinquish their donkeys, send them back to the sanctuary because it, it breaks down. The trust goes, the relationship goes, the donkeys get nervous. Uh, maybe we can salvage it with lots of behavior work, but often we can't. So this is the cautionary tale around doing too much too soon. The other approach is really to think about quality time. The donkeys get time to settle in, they get time to rest. You know, you've, they've just traveled two hours, four hours, six hours. It's gonna take them a couple of days of doing very little just to recover. You know, it's a lot of muscle effort to stand up in a lorry. And so this home, the number two approach, takes a lot more time to let the animals settle down. They might greet them off the lorry, they bring them in, and that's as much handling as they're gonna get. They have space, they have the environment to roam in, they can find where um, they actually fit, how it all works. And this type of home that's going to take that first month, six weeks, two months of doing very little other than enjoying the fact their donkeys are there, have a much greater chance of success. They get to know their donkeys, the donkeys get to know them, and we set off on a smooth path to success. So you can see there's some clear differences. And this is the approach that I want to give you. How do we fit into approach number two, that slow, steady approach to looking after the donkeys? Now, your donkeys are individuals and their character will determine how they deal with the change. So you might just like the same move house, get the job, go and do the presentation. For some people, there's a buzz and they might be able to do that and they live on that. For others, it is totally destroying. The problem is we don't know necessarily which donkeys are gonna cope with which. So sometimes we'll send out two donkeys, we go, yeah, Billy's really um, the, the more um, confident donkey and his, his friend, uh, Freddie is, more nervous. They get to the home and actually those roles reverse for some reason and Freddie becomes more confident and Billy tends to hang back. So knowing their characters is a real challenge and how they're going to act in that new environment with new people. So the best way is to have a good approach that allows every donkey to settle in calmly and carefully and allows you to learn how they're dealing with the changes that they're experiencing. Too often it's easy to take advantage of their good nature 
and presume that they're just going to fit in and it's going to be absolutely fine. We don't want to make those mistakes because they're difficult to correct if we overreach the nervous donkey or the donkey that's a little apprehensive. Now, I'm aware that I'm talking a lot about donkeys here that maybe have come from the donkey sanctuary. And we've done some training and they should be well handled. Um, and I want to emphasize that we can make the same mistakes and we'll talk about that as we go through with that supposedly well handled donkey you may be watching this because you've got two donkeys coming that aren't really very well handled or you've just had a donkey delivered that you've discovered is not as well handled as you thought it should be the principles are all the same the approach that we'll take is about settling in the time scales will be different and the support and things you might need to do might be a little bit different but this approach to settling your donkeys in will be the same regardless of the initial circumstances and that's because your donkey's behavior may change despite the training they've received so you you might receive donkeys that have previously been well handled and, and well changed but the change of environment the change of handler is so massive that the behavior of the donkeys will inevitably change. It's really important to acknowledge that and not do too much too soon. You're gonna recover some of the ground to build a solid foundation. Now, if, you've, if your donkeys are not very well handled and they turn up, they're probably gonna be even less well handled and more nervous and more anxious in those first two or three weeks. And you're gonna be keen to show them that you're a lovely person and you're gonna try and do lots to help them when actually what we should be doing is just backing off and giving them space. In the same way, if you've got well-trained donkeys, it's easy to think, oh, I can do lots. We still need to just take our time and build the relationship and get to know them before we move forward. What are we gonna do before our donkeys arrive? The one thing I'd say is give yourself a refresher, do your research. So you've got things like the Donkey Care Handbook, which you can download from the Donkey Sanctuary website. Make sure you've gone through that. If you have access to it, the new online learning stage one course from the Donkey Sanctuary, you can go through that and do it. Make a checklist from this webinar. I hope that you're kind of got a piece of paper, taking some notes, make a few uh, checklists so that you can fill that out and make sure you've done all the things we suggest. Maybe watch some of the other webinars on behavior or vet or dental. Really fill up your knowledge cup by exploring those. Uh, visit the Donkey Sanctuary website. There's lots of fact sheets, lots of information just to remind you about feeding and um, different types of donkey illness and conditions you might want to look out for. Small, feeding donkeys on small acreages, all sorts of things. If you've had behavioral advice, from the donkey sanctuary about your donkeys that are coming, revisit it, ask some questions. I can't emphasize enough the importance of really refreshing checking. Even if you're an experienced donkey owner, just remind yourself of these things, especially like the checklist from this webinar, because it can be easy to be a little bit blind to the things that we might miss. So important to do that. Give yourself a refresher. Uh, behavior webinars, you know, the good starting pace would be like the answers to common donkey behavioral issues. And uh, that talks through the science of behavior, the problems, talks things like um, how do you know if they are fighting or play fighting and gives you some pointers that you might be useful for you if you've got two donkeys that are quite playful when they arrive. Lots of information there. Have a look. Go to the Donkey Sanctuary uh, website. Uh, look for the information for owners, find the webinar page and away you go. Before your donkeys arrive, I think it's really important to set some expectations. Like I said, you know, well handled donkeys, great, we're going to be able to, to go and, and do stuff. So you think about your expectations, how quickly are you thinking you might be able to do something? How soon do you plan to have the farrier visit how quickly do you think the children grandchildren whoever can come and work with this donkey think about your expectations and maybe other people's expectations of you and your donkeys and how important that might be to ensure that we're not putting pressure on ourselves or on each other because when we put pressure on ourselves, we start to try and do too much too soon. If you've kind of said, oh yeah, the donkeys are coming, we'll be able to go for a walk in a couple of weeks. Even if you've kind of like hardly meant it, it puts pressure on you and the donkeys to perform. 
um, children. Now, if you've got young children, they're going to be super excited, just like you, to get these donkeys. Fantastic. But maybe talking to them about what it would be like for them to go to school. New school, new day, new friends. How would they feel? What would they want? Get them part of understanding how we set their donkeys up to succeed. Taking time, space, stepping back, not doing too much too uh, soon would be really important and this particular element. So get your children on board, get the youngsters on board so they know what's happening. Um, set your own expectations. Give yourselves, it's going to take six weeks. It's going to take a month, two months, five months. What I'm saying is it's, it's about the not having pressure to do something by a set date. Pressure is going to create problems and you want to avoid that. So when you think you might go for a walk or all of those things, just wait and let the donkeys dictate that as you progress through some of the steps I'm going to share with you uh, now. We might well get to this stage, but it's going to take a little bit of time for us to be able to do that. Um, there's no rush. We're supposed to be enjoying it. And let's see what we can do. Now, I'm not talking about the children not being able to cuddle the donkeys when they arrive. Um, I'm just talking about how quickly they can groom them, how quickly they might be able to take them for a walk, how um, that letting the donkeys come up to children and giving them scratches and doing those things are, are really important to set those expectations. So nobody's disappointed and we can start on the right foot. Before they arrive, let's think about the environment. Are our fences set up? Um, water, water is really important. We're going to talk about that separately when they arrive, but making sure you've got several water sources um, available so that they can um, really get to water that they need, uh, that there's no conflict for water. Um, we'll be looking at things like pinch points. Are there any bits where Two donkeys trying to go through a gate at once might cause an issue. Are they going to get uh, one donkey stuck in the corner? Have you set out the bedding? Have you set out the feed, but you've put it in enough spaces over enough area that there's not going to be conflict and fighting over the hay net because they're hungry when they've are arrived? Uh, have we got it in several different areas? Spread it out, allow them to move around that environment. Check there aren't any, you know, nails sticking out or things that just for a donkey that knows the environment might not be an issue, but for a new donkey that they could easily walk into something or injure themselves in some way. This, this um, environment here, lovely, they put in a sand pit for the donkeys. So we'll be thinking about environment enrichment. We'll be thinking about uh, things like poisonous plants you know what are your poisonous plants um there's a fact sheet on the website to to check those out on the foxglove here what needs to be removed from that environment to make it safe for your donkeys now again as donkeys become more familiar with their environment uh, they might be used to logs lying around and different aspects of how you keep your environment but to start with make sure it's clean make sure it's clear um, if you're gonna you know pressure wash it or disinfect it don't do it the day before they arrive do it a week before so some of the smell has um, dissipated you know otherwise it could be like your donkey's turning up to a veterinary hospital and so that could interfere with how they think about their environment and how comfortable they are Obviously, if you're bringing them to a veterinary hospital, well, uh, yeah, that's something you've got to deal with separately. But smells really powerful. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But just thinking about little things like that that set those donkeys up to succeed in the environment, go round. Part of the environment is obviously grazing, and we know that they're browsers. We know that we don't want to overfeed them because they're going to get uh, laminitis and, and those sorts of things. One of the things I did want to remind everybody about all of this is that the reason we want the settling in period to go so well is because we want to avoid the risk of hyperlipemia. So if the move is really stressful, if the donkeys stop eating and drinking, 
we can trigger hyperlipemia, which uh, can be fatal. So avoiding that by settling them in on a gradual basis, providing the right grazing, the right water, the right environment so they're as stress-free as possible is important, not just in terms of the relationship, but in terms of making sure they don't get ill. So we've got this nice environment here. Um, what can happen is you've been waiting for your donkeys for months and if you live in a climate like here in the UK, you can have grass that's two foot, three foot high that your donkeys are disappearing to. Now, if you strip grazing, that means that you're going to barely move the fence. They've got no space to really explore. You might need to think about how do we remove that grass? How do we create the space to allow the donkeys to move and walk without overeating? without um, gorging themselves. You, know, you may be getting donkeys in the winter that have been um, shot off the grass in their previous environment. They come to you and they're gonna be let out and um, go out onto grass. If that is the case, really small start. So, you know, literally five, 10 minutes a day for the first week or, or so and gradually build up the time. Follow the guidelines that we've set out about feeding to make sure that we don't overfeed them uh, that grass element. It might be that you've set up a track system. So we want to encourage more movement. Maybe that's as simple as a walk, um, electric fencing around the outside of the paddock so they can just walk around the outside and gives them more walking space. It could be something more complex like this picture where uh, they've got access to some woodland and all those sorts of elements. Again, be thinking about your poisonous plants in the woodland or if you've given them access to any areas like that. Uh, do you want those trees debarked and killed? Uh, those sorts of things might need to be thought about. Here's some ragwort, very easy to miss that unless you're aware of it. So there's lots to think about. Don't wait till the donkeys turn up and then go, oh, where am I going to put my fencing? Have it planned out. Have it removed if you need to. Um, turned into hay, got rid of, um, create the track system, think about the poisonous plants, think about the access in the different areas they're going to, to have access to. Think about enrichment. So this is an enrichment uh, resource that uh, we have. You can search online for it, Environment Enrichment for Donkeys, um, and this should bring you to the Donkey Sanctuary page and you'll find a link to this resource on the page. Um, Click through and you'll get this document. It's got about 70 different elements of um, activities that you can do from flavoured water and uh, herb and spice spread. We'll talk about these two specifically in a moment. But start by planning your enrichment activities. Don't just be like, when they get here, we'll do something. It can be enriching enough for a donkey to turn up to a new environment to be able to explore some grazing or to walk around the track system. We don't need to have them running around like crazy fools doing hundreds of different exercises, but plan ahead. What am I going to do for enrichment? What things can I do in my environment? What can I prepare so that I'm ready to do enrichment? Start off by doing enrichment. Don't wait for six months and then say, oh, what, maybe I should do some enrichment. Enrichment's really important. Uh, so find this resource, have a read through it, get enrichment into your program for caring for your donkeys right from day one. So this is a little bit about other animals. So, you know, we ask if you're taking donkeys from the donkey sanctuary in our guardian scheme that our donkeys are housed and managed separately to other uh, animals. And this is to deal with the bonding issues and separation and management. Um, and to avoid any initial stress, we advise not to introduce your donkey to other pets during the first 48 hours with you. So this is about how soon can you let the dog in? Um, and I have said that we're gonna have another recording about whether you should be letting the dog in with the donkeys. Um, keeping the other donkeys, if you have them back, keeping the llama away from the gate. Cause again, you turn up as a donkey, you've never met a llama and it's leaning over the fence looking at you. These are all stressors that could be in that environment. Keep them separate let the donkeys settle in. And if you think about this, if you're getting new donkeys to add to your current donkeys, um, the current donkeys you have may well have had time to settle in and to have enjoyed that relaxation and, and rest period. Now, if you, if you get new donkeys and you don't do the same for them, then you can have problems. So whenever you're bringing new animals into your environment, this process of taking it slowly, relaxation, quality time, building it up is important. If you're going to 
uh, keep your private donkeys with other animals. I really think you should be watching the, the other recording that we're doing for that settling your donkeys in with other animals and introduce them safely because there are some severe uh, risks and, and watching that might even help prevent some fatalities. So a little pause for reflection. I'm just going to stop for a moment. Um, maybe you want to pause the video if you're watching in catch up. Uh, is there anything you need to do or anything extra to add to this list of preparation? Is there anything you haven't already done in preparation for your donkeys? Is there anything that you think, actually, yeah, I need to just walk around the outside of the paddock and check there's nothing growing through the hedge that shouldn't be there? Make a couple of notes as you go now. Let's talk about when they arrive. So your donkey will generally come off a lorry, have a head collar on, if you're lucky enough to be in that situation. I would suggest that you, you take the head collar off. It's a new environment. There's an increased risk that your donkey might get caught on something um, which can cause a problem. So important that you take the head collar off. If you really have to um, keep a head collar on for some reason, then make sure it's a field safe head collar, something that is gonna snap if that donkey gets caught. Even then, you know, if your donkey is from an environment where it isn't very well handled, where they can't be caught, I would still suggest taking the head collar off. We need to do the work to get that animal to be comfortable with, with being caught. And just having the head collar on and grabbing it as it goes past isn't really the solution. Working on a shaping plan, getting help and advice about the behaviour and doing that as part of this process. Now, all of that does is if you've got well-handled donkeys that you can fit a head collar on, we might get to that more quickly than your animal that's really nervous and it might take a month or longer to get them used to having the head collar on. Other things when they arrive, really pay attention to their body language. I think it's pretty clear what uh, she's saying here to us. And we need to listen right from the start. It's very easy, we wanna crowd in our donkey, we want to cuddle them, we want to give them fuss. It may be that your donkey is really nervous and actually being 20 feet away from it is gonna cause them to be anxious. So pay attention to the body language, be listening to the signals from their tail, their ears, their muscle tension, tightness in the muzzle, their um, eyes and how tight or, or worried those eyes look really start listening to them very important because that's the basis of the relationship this is when you start to learn about your donkeys how do they communicate what do they say have a cup of tea and i this has two kind of aspirations one is you yourself of course i'm here in the uk have a cup of tea sit watch your donkeys don't rush in to do things let them have time to explore but also your donkeys have just arrived they may well be thirsty so we want water available but maybe you would like to give them some herbal tea so to make it more likely they'll drink to make it more appetizing now water changes its flavor and smell from different regions so ensuring that your donkey drinks peppermint tea maybe a um, chamomile tea give them a couple of different options herbal tea bag stew it up pour it in the water fill it up with um, water and that gives your donkeys options it, it's part of the enrichment process as well so that's good you can set the practice you can do every now and again and give them different options to see what they might like while you're sitting back having your cup of tea, they can be drinking their cup of tea. Uh, and it might all be interesting if you've got, uh, like it's winter, if it's cold, give them warm water when they arrive. Just put some warm water in a bucket, top up with coals, so you've got some nice water that's warmish. And quite often donkeys will prefer warm water to cold water. So give them that option again. Give them cold water as well, but make sure they've got a bucket of warm water. These will ensure that they drink, it gets over the dehydration of any travel and really makes that environment much more nurturing for them. Here's a smell activity. 
So, uh, in that enrichment document, this is some paprika, I think, that's been spread around. It gives the donkey some extra activities to do and explore when they arrive. Donkeys are, are the sense of smell is really important. So, they're going to want to sniff their whole environment. Adding in a little bit of this type of activity just encourages that behavior a bit further and gives them something to do and gives them something to um, add to that knowledge of the environment that they're seeking. This is the bit where you're finding on your new day at work, you know, where do you eat? Where's the canteen? Where's the tea room where I can make a cup of tea? You know, what are, what's normal within this environment? And that's what we want your donkeys to be able to do. That their arrival isn't about lots of cuddles and fuss and doing things. It's about the freedom to explore, to drink, to look and find their food, to sniff and wander around and check everything out. Now do make sure that the environment has plenty of water. Using buckets allows you to monitor your new donkey's water intake. And that's a good tip. Even if you've got an uh, um, automatic drinker in, in there, make sure you use buckets as well, because it gives them options and giving options around water uh, is a really good welfare, but it also means that you can observe if they're drinking. Put some extra buckets outside, the sun on it will break down some of the chemicals, makes it more familiar. Um, and it means if the water's inside their stable or shelter and they don't want to go into that initially, they've still got water outside. Try adding a little hot water I've talked about. Um, but if you're concerned your donkeys aren't drinking in the first few days, try adding a little cap full of peppermint cordial to the water in the buckets for a few days, just to see if that will tempt them to drink more and get them used to it. If you're really fortunate, you may be able to ask wherever the donkeys have come from to, to bring a 25 litre you know, container of water that you could put in a couple of buckets for them so that it's familiar water in that new environment. Maybe a little scatter enrichment. So this is where you chop up a few small pieces of carrot or apple and you scatter them in the environment. It could be high fiber nuts or it could be some chaff. But again, it's just in encouraging them to explore. It's encouraging that this is a nice environment. It's allowing you to stand and watch their behavior um, spread widely. You don't want to create any conflict and stand well back. Don't be involved in... Uh, and in their environment when they're doing this sort of activity. But again, really just letting the animal explore, settle, feel good, uh, and giving you a massive opportunity to watch your donkey and see what they do. Because at the donkey sanctuary, we'll often be talking to people about observing what's normal for your donkey. Changes in behavior are the key to recognizing um, medical conditions, behavioral issues, uh, colics, uh, laminitis, all sorts of things like that. So knowing your donkey as quickly as possible begins to set out what their normal behavior is. So you can tell if that changes. The donkey that normally is very interested in this scatter feeding and food, and you think a couple of days later, oh, you don't quite look like yourself. So you throw out some scatter food and the donkey doesn't really take much interest. Okay, now we know we've got a problem we need to explore and probably need to get the vet out for. Maybe keeping a diary, write some notes on your donkeys. Who liked what? what who went first through the gate? What, just begin to, what time do you see them sleep? What time do you um, see them um, lying down? You know, just little things for that first three, four weeks to make getting to know your donkeys really well is very important. The best I could come up with a little uh, idea to make this stick. Let, let them uh, stew a little. So space, give them that space to move. Don't crowd them. Yes, if they come up, give them scratches, but give them plenty of space to move around in. Give them time, you know, like I say, 48 hours before they introduce and see new animals. Plenty of time to sleep and rest and we're not overdoing it. Uh, enrichment to make their environment uh, more stimulating and more inviting and make sure they've got the water. So just put that, let them stew it a little in there in, in your practice as you're going through when they arrive is really the key. Give them space. You know, you've got plenty of time to get to know them. You've got plenty of time for them to build a relationship with you. Do not expect them to rush off the the lorry bray at you and instantly form a bond you may well need to get to know them they may well need to get to know you 
It might happen, but often owners are a little bit disappointed. The donkey is probably used to humans, but they may not be used to your new environment. So they're going to want to explore that. They're going to want to check all of that out before they start checking you out and working with you. So enjoy watching them explore. This is where you start to learn about them. Again, I'll just pause so that if there's anything you need to plan for, is there anything that you haven't thought of in the things I've just said that maybe you need to include in your when they arrive plan? Do we need to talk to people about expectations, about how we're not going to go in and start grooming them on day one or how we're going to just let them settle in and watch them for the first 48 hours? What are we going to do with the dog when the, when the donkeys arrive? Pause, make some notes, um, make sure you've got that checklist in place. We talk a little about the timeline of these next stages and how the relationship is going to develop after that, that initial arrival. You know, in the first week, you're really not going to know much about your donkeys. You're going to start learning about them, maybe keeping your diary, but you're not really going to know them particularly well. In the first month, you'll start to get to know them. Now, this, this really depends on how well trained and how comfortable they are with people is how well you know them. If your donkey's really fearful and nervous and is and actually all you can get is within two or three meters of them before they want to move away and, and, and panic, then you're still learning about them. Don't try too hard to force it. You're a lovely person. You want them to feel happy. Let's try and, and get over this really quickly and uh, let's go at the donkey's pace. For another donkey, it's going to be totally different. And I, I want to talk about time because... We generally say it's probably going to take you a whole year, the entire year, to really get to know your donkeys because you're going to go through the different seasons and uh, different weather conditions and temperatures and all the things that your donkey is going to do. You're going to go through farrier visits and vet visits and dental visits to really get to know your donkey and build that up. It is not going to happen instantly. So have that mindset where you're thinking this is going to be a year's work before we really get to know them and they get to know us. And accept that. That's part of the journey. That's the enjoyable bit, getting to know your donkeys and building that relationship. Don't be disappointed if it takes some time. Um, you know, and, and time is interesting because progress is not time bound. You know, it, it's a ticking time bomb, in fact, when you try to get things done too quickly, whether that's get the head collar on your well-trained donkey and pick their feet up or whether it's just get near your nervous donkey. Putting pressure on how quickly you do that is going to put pressure on yourself it's going to change your body language it's going to put pressure on the donkey and it's going to change actually how well you can do those things um the donkeys are going to progress at different rates depending on your level of experience their level of confidence and previous experience you know how much time do you have to work with them and, and train them uh, your level of confidence how confident can be the donkeys if you're less confident that's fine but just allow the fact that it's going to take a bit longer to get to know each other and again, the levels of support you ask for and receive, you know, again, the donkey sanctuary is here for you, whether you've got private um, donkeys or guardian donkeys, get in touch with your DWA, your donkey welfare advisor, get in touch with, through the website, email us, do those sorts of things. Uh, but don't put pressure on how quickly the things are going to happen, because I'm going to talk you through these four stages. And the first stage is the only stage that I'm going to put a time on it, which is this first week. And it's quality time. So you're doing all the things that I've talked about. You're doing mental simulation, um, but allow them to rest. So we don't want them running around like crazy things, trying to do all the enrichment. And it might be just being in the environment and wandering around and a little bit of a herbal tea or a, a scent discrimination will be enough for their mental simulation in that first week. Spend time with your donkeys, watching them, learning. Um, what are their natural routines? Keep that diary. Allow your donkeys to explore their environment as much as possible. If they come up, great, give them some affection, but don't force on them, you know, be there, be available, scratches on the withers, not pats. Donkeys understand things that are closest, their normal and natural behavior. And, and you never saw two donkeys pat each other in all your life. So a nice wither scratch, good firm wither scratch that gets them um, resembling the mutual grooming uh, that they will do for each other. Don't expect like things like mutual grooming between donkeys to happen too quickly. The stress of an environment can change things and it might take them 
quite a while to be relaxed enough to do things like mutual broom, lay down in the stable. You know, it might be for the first few days they don't go into their stable. That's okay. Hopefully they've got some shelter. Um, if it's really torrentially bad weather and we need to get them in, then okay, that's something that we might have to consider how we do that, starting with really exciting, tempting treats and um, maybe using some environmental factors to create the space where they're going to walk into the stable more willingly. Um, but your donkey getting a, a little bit wet with a rain um, shower is not going to be an issue. You don't need to rush out and get them in. Just let them feel comfortable. Maybe practice walking up to your donkeys if they're calm and comfortable with that. Give them a scratch, walk away. You don't need to have the head collar. You don't need to catch them. The one thing I don't want you to do this week is try and pick up their feet. Now, if you've been on a donkey sanctuary course, you'll be thinking about, I've got to pick out their feet. I've got to you know, make sure those feet are, are looked after. It is very unlikely anything bad is going to happen if you don't pick out the feet for the first two or three weeks. The important thing is we build the confidence and trust between you and your donkey before you get to picking up the feet in later stages. Take that pressure off. Again, for some people, this whole process might take a month. For other, it might take three months if your donkey's really nervous. It doesn't matter. The process is the same of just slowing down, doing the right things with your donkeys. Stage two, starting to catch. So practice catching. If your donkey's happy for you to do that stage one stuff, walk up to them, give them a scratch, go up to them, pretend to put on a head collar, imaginary head collar that you prick up and you put on and you drop it so that your donkey's used to you fiddling around and you're feeling comfortable with it. Then take the head collar, put it on, give them a scratch, take it off, walk away. Don't go and catch them and then take them for a walk. Get them used to being caught. And practice that in different areas if you can. Practice stroking your donkey all over. So you're beginning to stroke down their body. This is the precursor to picking up feet and grooming. Just run my hands all over your body. You're looking for lumps and bumps and cuts, but you're just getting them used to being touched all over. And you're giving yourself information about how that donkey might behave. Are they calm? Are they relaxed? Are they comfortable? Or do they seem a little bit nervous or uncomfortable in certain areas that you might need to get a bit more support with or some training handling in the right way? If they are calm being caught, maybe practice, yeah, taking a few steps, lead them over to where their food, uh, the stable is, or where you might groom them. We don't need to tie them up. If they're comfortable, just begin stroking their legs, handling their feet. One of the things I do want to say throughout your time with donkeys is once you've got used to them, they've got used to you, do you use the head collar even if you don't need to? So a lot of people start, well, I don't need to tie him up for, for grooming. I just go out in the field and I catch him and by standing there and I groom him and I pick out his feet and he's fine. doesn't need a head collar. That is amazing. But what happens is we then start to only use the head collar when it's for the vet, the farrier, the dentist, things the donkey might find mildly uncomfortable. So then they start to see the head collar as a signal that something unpleasant is going to happen. The way to balance that is always to be using your head collar to catch your donkey for good stuff as well just to be brought in now and again, just to be have their feet picked out, just to be groomed, just for scratches, just for no reason whatsoever, other than putting it on, taking it off, and then giving them some enrichment. So a little tip there, really important to follow that. I've no, long, no idea how long this will take for you, your donkeys in their environment, um, but it's just going through that process. When you're comfortable in these areas, you move on to stage three, which is spend time in grooming. So start grooming your donkey brushes, do it all over their body. Maybe you can begin to pick up the feet for two to five seconds. Practice leading, you know, into the stable, into the yard, perhaps even around the field. Think about preparing your donkeys for their first hoof trim, you know, in their new home. Have you thought about where it's going to happen? Um, have you thought about how you're going to prepare your donkeys for holding their feet up for longer? And this is where you might need to get some help, some guidance on a shaping plan for the farrier. Um, so you can practice being the farrier, you know, putting them where you think the farrier will do them or normally is likely to do them and, and standing there, picking up feet and hold them up for five, six minutes rather than the usual 15, 20 seconds to pick out their feet. Practicing those things is going to be really beneficial because it lets the donkey know what's coming and, and how they can behave. Lots of scratches for positive reinforcement. For, for all the behaviours that you want, standing still, being calm, being caught, lots of, yes, that's what I want. Scratches, scratches, scratches on the withers, use them as rewards. 
once you've got through all of this stage, then we're going to be practicing actually picking out the feet. So, you know, this is the stage you start to just go, yep, yeah, I can pick up those feet. Uh, we can increase the leading. We can continue the um, enrichment activities. And, you know, each of these stages, stage three, two, three, and four, you're still going to be doing all the stuff you were doing in stage one. That's still the quality time. It's still observing your donkeys. It's still doing the enrichment. Um, but it's also just adding in this increase in the catching and the leading in familiar areas and, and spreading it out, you know. And if you want to start thinking about, oh, what's the next bit? This is before you ever start doing the training to say, I want to go for a walk out on the road. That involves going over some poles and some tarpaulins and walking away and making it safe. You know, it really is about this preparation to allow your donkey the best opportunity to settle in, not being rushed setting your expectations so that you are not doing too much too soon and you can see hopefully that too much too soon in the best will intention is probably going to take you a month to go through this process for other people with donkeys that are very nervous or handled it might be three to six months but get help if if you need help um, really important so i've done you a few do's and don'ts don't rush don't do too much too soon and, and that's a vague thing because like what's too soon for some donkeys two or three weeks for other donkeys two or three months don't label your donkey as stubborn difficult naughty if it doesn't do the things you that you think they should don't start labeling them because that label will change how you perceive them it'll change how you interact with them and, and it can be a downward spiral that can lead to some real issues you know don't take their behavior personally the donkey's just communicating he's not telling you he hates you or doesn't love you he's just showing you that he's scared or worried or previous experiences have not been so good so very much about the right sort of language around your donkeys understanding that um, those donkeys and how they behave and we've got lots of res resources including those webinars that will explain lots of this for you um, and obviously, having done your research and uh, right at the start and you're a refresher, you're not going to treat them as a, a small horse with big ears, despite the information you might be given by other well-meaning equid owners. So you might find other horse owners start telling you to treat them in a particular way, especially if they're experienced and, and you're a novice. They are not small horses with big ears. So really stick to your donkey knowledge, stick to the sources of information that uh, are really for donkeys. Some do's. Yeah, do remember it's a huge change. Follow this plan that we've set out, these stages, um, to make it really clear for you. Uh, remember you're learning too, so take your time. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to get too much done too quickly. There's lots of support, so ask for help early. You know, there's nothing sadder than somebody relinquishing their donkey or getting in touch when they've had a donkey for years and you know the donkey kicks and they've managed it for six years and now they can't cope and you're like why didn't you get in touch five and a half years ago we could have sorted this out so don't be afraid to try and reach out especially the donkey sanctuary uh, we're not going to try and take the donkey off you or doing those things we want the donkey to stay with you in in your environment so helping you to do that and get the best for your donkey is really important and you know do provide plenty of mental stimulation for your for your donkey so check out that enrichment document in fact pause the video go search for it now set it up before you leave this webinar um, make sure you've got that access to that document um, you know it's a journey it's not a battle so if you're in the uk if you've got guardian donkeys then then from the donkey sanctuary talk to your welfare advisor uh, look on the website wherever you are in the world lots of information health and resources and training courses and feeding donkeys and mares and foals you know a huge amount there uh, if it's a behavior issue that you're concerned about equine.behavior at the donkeysanctuary.org.uk we'll find our way to our behavior team and we will do our best to support you and uh, work with that so get help get support um, really important and look out for that next video introducing donkeys to new donkeys and other animals find that go through that if you're going to be in that situation or if in the future you decide to to introduce new animals go check that out make sure it's happening for you there we go i hope that we have been able to cover lots of different areas 
I hope we've got a bit of a checklist. I hope we've given you some ideas about what you can be doing. But the biggest, most important thing I hope is we've showed you about taking time, about how important it is to slow down, to enjoy slowing down, not doing too much, doing managing those expectations. Remember what it would be like if you were in that new job on the, on the day you moved house and you're having to travel across London. That's your donkey's experience. So taking the time, following those four stages I've set out is the most important thing to take away from this webinar. I hope it helps. If you have questions, uh, get in touch, look out for the other resources and we very much look forward to supporting you. And we hope that you have a long, happy, healthy, contented life uh, for you and your donkeys and their well-being is uh, the best it can possibly be because of the care that you're giving them. Thank you and goodbye.